Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Scuba Diver Magazine. My name's James and I am Scuba Diver Magazine's man in Miami. If you don't know me already, I have my own YouTube channel called Divers Ready. We create digital content with a single goal in mind, to help make you a better diver. And I'm very happy to welcome you to this, the first in the series, the first in our new playlist that we're calling Scuba Basics, brought to you by Aqualung. Breaking down for you the basic components of a full scuba setup, piece by piece, for you, my universal scuba buddies. And this episode, we are kicking things off with fins. Get it? Kicking things off? Never mind. Later in this video, we're gonna be giving away one pair of Aqualung Storm Fins, courtesy of Aqualung. And as Aqualung were kind enough to send me a pair, I took them diving yesterday, so I wanna share with you my thoughts on who I think these fins are meant for. But first, and as with every video in this series, we're gonna go over the basic components of a scuba fin. So first and foremost, all fins need a contact surface through which the power that's supplied by your leg kicking is transferred to the blade of the fin. And that is the job of the foot pocket. Now, a well-fitting foot pocket is absolutely essential. Too loose and you'll lose efficiency in the kick, too tight and you'll get blisters and sores and it will just chafe your feet to pieces. Next up we have the platform. The platform is basically the fins version of a shoe's sole. And just like the sole of a shoe, the design there is to give you grip. You wanna choose a platform that has enough grip so you don't slip over on a wet boat deck, but not such a high profile grip that it creates drag. Because when you're finning, drag can be a real, don't say it, drag. Then of course we have the blade. The blade is basically the reason we buy fins because what it does is extend your natural propulsion device, i.e. your feet, out into the water column. The blade of the fin can be made up of any different number of proprietary materials. These ones are injection molded, monoprene, uh, but you want to choose a blade that has the least possible parts because every time there's a joint between two different materials, that's a possible failure point. Now choosing the stiffness of a blade very much depends on your body type. If you are a powerful or stocky kind of person, you're gonna want a stiffer blade to give you propulsion through the water. However, if you're slight of build, having a very thick or very strong blade can cause leg and muscle cramps. So choose a fin whose blade is flexible, appropriate to your body type. For example, I'm a great big rugby player. If I choose fins that are too flimsy, I'll kick and kick and kick for days and not go anywhere because I won't be able to create enough thrust to propel my gorilla frame through the water. So I need fins that are fairly rigid. Next up you have the ribs, which are these rails that run the length of the fin and connect the blade to the foot pocket. The ribs give their fin their rigidity and act kind of like a skeleton. The thicker the ribs, the stronger the fin, but also the more power required to kick. Then last but not least, you have the heel of the fin. This is probably the most defining characteristic when you're shopping for new fins, as to whether you want an open heel design fin like this, or a closed heel fin looking something like this. Each separate design have their pros and cons, so I'll take you through them now. Starting with the closed heel fin, otherwise known as the full foot fin. Advantage of full foot fins or closed heel fins traditionally is that they are super light, super flexible, there's no need to wear booties, so they're normally great for travel, you can just throw them in, uh, and they're normally pretty simplistic in design, which normally makes them cheaper. Disadvantages of a full foot fin are, it can be hard, you might have to shop around to find ones that fit you well, because these fins are based off of your shoe size, and unlike shoes that are fit size by size, sometimes even in half size increments, full foot fins tend to cover a range of sizes. So for example, these ones are five and a half to six and a half US, which means if you've got a size five and a half foot, they may be slightly too big for you, or if you have a six and a half, they may be slightly too small. And if the fit is not good, that can lead to either blisters or the actual fin coming off in the water, which is the last thing you want to happen. Now, because these fins are designed to not be worn with booties, they're not particularly good for any kind of cold water diving because your feet won't be insulated and your feet won't be protected. Now, traditional open heel fins like these are designed to be worn with booties, which means you can get a better fit because you're gonna size your foot to a booty which is sold in shoe sizes and then pick the closest equivalent open heel fin for your size. 
And the advantage of that is then you can change booties depending on the water temperature and the thickness of the insulation you want on your feet. And also for shore diving, if you need to walk over rough terrain, it's great to have booties on to protect your feet and then don your fins in the water and certainly open heel fins are easier to do that. The disadvantages of open heel fins are that they are heavier, they are bulkier, and they take up more space in your luggage because you need to take the fins and then you also need to bring booties with you as well. So these fins, the Aqualung Storm, are a little different. They are open heel fins that are designed to be worn without booties. So I was very excited to receive these fins and get them in the water and try them out. But I was also a little bit nervous because the idea of putting a bare foot into an open heel fin, I didn't want to blister my foot up and shred them to pieces. So yesterday I drove the 45 minutes south from Miami to Key Largo and took them on a test dive. So my first and overwhelming impression of these fins as soon as I got them out of the box is just how super light they are. Oh wow. Ooh. These are uh, these are super light. So that immediately turns my mind towards travel and that means I need to weigh them against the fins I currently travel with which are the Mares of Antiquatros. And by weigh them against I mean literally I weighed them. 1.769 kilos versus over two kilos, but then you add the booties in there and that's 2.796 kilos. So these fins, when you consider that you don't need booties with them, by the time you've weighed them against my current Maris of Antiquatros with a pair of size 14 booties, I'm saving a kilo in luggage weight, 2.2 pounds. That's huge. To be able to make one simple switch of gear and save 2.2 pounds of luggage is fantastic. How did they fit? Well, I got the biggest size available, which is XXL US size men's 11.5 to 13.5, and I wear a size 14 shoe. And I gotta say they fit really well. There was no toe squeeze at all. I feel they were secure around the midfoot and the strap wasn't so tight that it was like smushing my foot up into the fin. Um, they were super comfortable. Now, as a big guy, I am super skeptical when I see a fin that is so light because to me, light means flimsy and flimsy means no propulsion. Now, how do they stack up kicking against the Maris of Antiquatros? Did I get as much thrust? No. Are they meant to give me a massive amount of thrust? No, they're travel fins. They're for my vacation dives where I'm not gonna be working hard because hey, I'm on holiday. Did they give me enough thrust to complete two very easy recreational dives in Key Largo? Absolutely. Did I try all the different kick styles? Yes, absolutely. Flutter kick, frog kick. I did some helicopter turns and then no problem at all. The one issue I did have was back finning. I found that because they were so light, when I was back finning, I was actually drawing myself up in kind of a sloping direction. But again, on vacation, on recreational dive profiles, how often do I need to back fin? So obviously these enter the market to compete with Scuba Pro's Go Fins, which are also a single piece of monoprene construction with an open heel design to be worn without booties. So how do they stack up against those? Well, I can see that Aqualung has two clear advantages. Number one, they have grip on the inside of the foot pocket, which the Scuba Pro Go Fins do not have. And I actually was on the boat yesterday with a guy who I had Scuba Pro Go Fins, and he told me they were really slick and slippery. Uh, and when he wore socks on the inside of his Go Fins, even more so. 
I didn't have any trouble slipping with my foot in the foot pocket whatsoever. The second advantage that these fins have over the Scuba Pro Go fins is that their bungee is a lot more robust. So this is a single piece of rubber bungee as opposed to the Scuba Pro Goes which have uh, threaded bungee wrapped in a nylon weave. As for the platform, um, yeah, I did, the first time I stood up in these on a wet deck, I did nearly face plant. I slipped and I uh, had to grab myself. But I believe that's just because they need to be worn in a little bit and that only happened once and I learned my lesson. As for donning and doffing, super easy on the boat. They're on in less than a second. I took them off and put them on in the water multiple times. Very, very easy. So who do I think that these fins are designed for? Well, for me, they are an excellent choice for vacation divers, resort divers to tropical warm water destinations. Obviously, if you need your foot insulated, uh, these aren't the fins for you. And I would also say, if you're gonna do a lot of shore diving, I would probably choose a booty style fin. But I'm very happy to add these to my fin collection and I can definitely see me using them on tropical warm water shoots. Uh, just because they saved me a kilo of luggage, that's already a great enough reason. Now, as I said earlier, Scuba Diver Magazine is giving away one pair of Aqualung Storm Fins to one lucky viewer. And if you'd like to enter that contest, the details can be found in the description of this video below. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to subscribe to Scuba Diver Magazine's channel. Just hit that little button down there and click the little bell icon, and that way you won't miss any of our awesome content, particularly this Scuba Basics series. Thank you so much for watching this first episode in our Basics series sponsored by Aqualung. Let us know in the comments below what pieces of gear you'd like us to make videos about next. Also, I'll put a link to the whole Basics playlist right here and just below that will be a link to my channel. So if you'd like to see more content from me, you can check it out down there. Until next time, my name's James, Scuba Diver Magazine's man in Miami. Dive safe, dive often. <laughs>